Uh, well, I guess it's me again. Uh, again. Nice to see you all. Um, for those I haven't met yet, my name is John Lilich. I work for a company called Consensus, and I have an energy markets background before doing all this Ethereum stuff. I was building microgrids in New York, and this is a microgrid. And this is why microgrids are important. What you're looking at is uh, um, Manhattan during Hurricane Sandy, and uh, that region over there, uh, around the New World Trade Center where the lights are on, uh, basically that's a series of microgrids. And microgrids are when a facility has its own generative and storage capacity. It can uh, provide power for itself independent of the grid. And in this instance, um, the Con Edison grid uh, basically failed because of the, uh, uh, because of the hurricane. And uh, as a result of having distributed energy resources in place, um, that part of Manhattan was okay. And just on a, on a side note, um, when Sandy hit, we were extremely lucky because the grid was down for a long time. And had Sandy hit a couple weeks later, uh, when the temperature dropped, a lot of people would have died. Um, so we got very, very lucky. Microgrids are very important. The decentralization of the grid is very important um, because of the grid resiliency component of it. In the event the grid goes down, your lights stay on. Um, this is Martha, she lives in Brooklyn. I live in Brooklyn too, and uh, she's super cool. This is her rooftop, she's got a big solar system or photovoltaic system, and she produces more energy than she consumes, um, which is really cool. Uh, this is an area within Brooklyn, kind of close to where I live, and this is Martha's house. And her side of the street, um, there's a few neighbors that have photovoltaic panels like she does, and those are what we're calling prosumers. So they're consumers with generative capacity that are producing something. Um, in this case, they're producing kilowatt hours, and they are actually overproducing. If you take a look at Martha's PV array, it's huge. Mm -hmm. And before, that would have been kind of an expensive thing to buy and install, but thanks to the like gargantuan manufacturing capacity of our friends in China, those things aren't expensive anymore. Um, basically, some years ago, China just decreed we will have solar, and they are producing at an unimaginable scale. Just to give you a sense of it, in the first quarter of this year, they installed something like 32 or 33 gigawatts of solar capacity. In the first quarter, that's all of France ever. <laughs> uh, and so, now what we're seeing as a result of these uh, macroeconomic kind of uh, uh, dynamics is people like Martha popping up everywhere. And so as the physical infrastructure of the grid decentralizes, um, and, and it is happening, it's happening at an incredible pace. If you look at power producers, for example, in Germany, they're hemorrhaging money. Uh, their power production business isn't making any more money because now the individual is empowered to generate their own energy. And so what types of new business logic layers can we build on top of this uh, physical infrastructure that's decentralizing? And so this is a sandbox, a project that we set up in this neighborhood of Brooklyn, where the prosumers on one side, Martha and her friends, generate uh, electricity. And what we do is uh, we sync into the smart meter, which uh, every time you buy one of these, you get this little like smart meter thingy. And um, we take the data from the smart meter. The smart meter is an oracle of truth. And if Martha or any of the other prosumers overproduce, we generate tokens like Ether, um, di tradable digital assets representing that production. And so now, she can sell those tokens to her neighbors across the street. And uh, why would that be important? Well, in the United States, there's a renewable energy credits market, and I'll try to go through this really, really quickly. Uh, basically, in order to stimulate the production of renewable energy, projects at a large scale. Let's say you want to build a solar farm in Texas. Um, there are subsidies in place to incentivize you to do that. In the United States, though, they're called renewable energy credits. And what those are is an attribute that's a certificate that attributes to a megawatt of clean energy being generated somewhere. And so as a, a project planner or developer, when you build that solar farm in Texas, for every megawatt that you generate, you get that credit, which you can then sell on. And so the revenue from realizing that sale can help subsidize your costs and ultimately incentivize you to build the project in the first place. And it's a great program and there's many others. I'm sure you've all heard of carbon credits and things like this. These are large schemes 
to incentivize some type of rational behavior from the marketplace, in this case, building renewable projects, energy projects. Um, the problem is the renewable energy credit system. Oh, no, no, just. I'm, I'm cool? Okay. Close. Okay, I'm getting close, so I'll try to talk faster. Um, <laughs> as a power producer in Texas that owns a solar farm, I can sell my renewable energy credit to the utility in Vermont who can use it to satisfy their state requirements for CO2 emissions. However, because the registry systems that govern this market are centralized and disparate and face the same sort of legacy database infrastructure problems we see everywhere, that renewable energy credit often gets sold twice. And so you negate the benefit. Uh, the other problem is there's a retail market that's been built on top of this industry. And so there's retailers in New York State, for example, that sell green power at a 30% premium to Brooklyn hipsters <laughs> who don't actually realize that when they sign up and pay that premium, all they're buying is the environmental attribute that a megawatt was created somewhere. They're not actually getting the electrons because those are produced in Texas or somewhere far away. And electrons don't travel great distances. They go to the nearest load. That's just like physics. So what you end up happening is uh, people that pay a 30% premium for green energy, leave their air conditioner running all day, when in fact the power source locally in Brooklyn is the cogen plant, which is raining down more particulates on the community, but people don't know because they think they're buying green energy. They're just buying the attributes. When we localize, when we sink into the smart meter and enable peer-to-peer, -peer, the reason you want to buy credits from your neighbor is because probably, or there's a good chance, his electrons are going to your fridge. Um, sorry, I think I'm getting cut off here. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Uh, but anyway, if you want to learn more, I'll be around. Um, happy to talk more. Thank you.